am going with the Jets, Mr. Grinch, to win this one 17 to 14. What a stupid little who you are. (laughs) What a stupid who I was all week. God, what a f***ing disaster that was. Hello, it's the PFTPM Chris Sims Unbuttoned Joint Mega Picks Podcast. I am ready to concede (gasps) against (gasps) the (gasps) spread. I'm ready to concede. It was a bad week. You beat me in the two games we disagreed against each other on straight up. And you can shove it straight up your ass. <laughs> We're now tied. 120 to 73. Tied going into the final five weeks. I was three and ten against the spread last week. How Damn. the fuck did that happen? Damn, you suck. Three and ten? Woo! Good see, lord. See you later. See ya. Leaving you in the dust in that department. Get out of here, Grinch. Yeah. You know. Hey, you're above five hundred. That's pretty impressive. Dickhead. Thank you very much. I, I'd like to be called Mrs. Who. All right. That's how I'm dressed as on the right. All right. I'm Mrs. Cindy who, Lou. There. It's not Mrs. Oh. Cindy Lou. Oh, Simsy Lou who. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Got it. Oh, we're tied with best so, bets uh, too. You caught me in the best bets too. You prick. Yeah. All right. You mumbling stuttering prick. Wait, wait, well, say it. I, I don't care about spread. Yeah. Straight up is all I care about. Yep. I hear you. I hear you. I want to win them all uh, just like you do, but that straight up one is, it's got a little extra flavor to it. No doubt about it. Pete, I know I had a seven game. Pete doesn't need to fucking tell me I had a seven game lead at one point. I'm well aware I had a seven Let game Let me just lead make sure. It's the second straight week. Blew the seven game second lead. straight week. Chris has swept all categories. Chris is eight and two in best bets in the last three weeks. 20 and nine against the spread in the last two weeks. Mike hasn't beaten Chris in a category since he swept all three in week 10. Mike had a seven game straight up lead after week 10. Chris, Chris has now shoved that deficit right up Florio's ass. Woo! And here, for one more little chuckle, just for, for, for last week's sake, like, because I think once you say it out loud, it'll be even funnier. Say it one more time. Say, I'm taking the Jets and Tim Boyle to win. Just to give me one more laugh before we start. Say that one more time. Say, I'm going to take the Jets and Tim Boyle. Okay, all right. <laughs> All right, you ready? You ready? I will. <laughs> F- you. How about that? Yes. How about that? Yes, right. that's right. Here we go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> by the way, by the way, every week this season you can play along with us. DraftKings has set up the free one thousand dollar Florio and Sims pick 'em pool. Pick every game against the spread for a chance at a one thousand dollar prize pool every week. Download the DraftKings app, click on the pools tab, and enter free the thousand dollar Florio and Sims pick 'em pool to make your picks, or visit DraftKings.com slash pools. Just like us, you have to enter all of your picks before kickoff of the Thursday night game. That's where we begin this week. By the way, before we go any farther, someone suggested that when you get cranked up, you sound like Jerry Seinfeld. Wow. I haven't heard it yet, Okay, but I'm paying attention. Okay. I'm paying attention. All right. When you get cranked up, like the variation, the modulation, the excitement yeah. that comes through your uh, voice, but let's, why? let's see how excited you get. Why is Florio such an asshole? I, I don't know. It just Maybe he was made like that. <laughs> what's, what's the deal with football? <laughs> right. It's not shaped like a foot. Or a ball. All right, (laughs) uh, let's go to Thursday Night Football. Patriots at the Steelers. Steelers are six-point favorites. Over-under of 30. Lowest over-under, as we said earlier today, since 1993, when three games had a 29 or a 28 over-under on December 26, 1993, due to weather, all three hit the over. We'll see what our scores are for tonight to see if this one hits the over. Chris, who do you have, Steelers or Patriots? I have a feeling you're going Steelers. I'm curious about the score. Yeah, I'm definitely going Steelers. I I can't in, like, good faith, brain, heart, soul, or anything pick the Patriots. I mean, it's it's up there with – the biggest dumpster fires in football right now. And then, you know, add on top of that, like, th- this is another one. Say this out loud. They scored zero points against the Chargers. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Zero points against the Chargers? Like, get out of here. That's crazy. So, yeah, I can't get behind that, right? Uh, it just no confidence in their offense. I think this is the kind of game with that offense that – 
hey, the Steelers, their defense, T.J. Watt, there's a lot of injuries on the Patriots, you know, and the offensive line. I could see this being a strip sack fumble, pick six, pick up a fumble, return it for a touchdown type of game. Uh, I like the Patriots defense, as you know, and I think they'll give the Steelers offense some issues, but slowly but surely they'll break because they'll be on the field too much. I'm going 17-9 Steelers, and I feel like that might be a little too high with the scoring. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got 13-3 Steelers. I, I don't have a whole lot of faith in Mitch Trubisky, but, but – I don't have any faith in the New England Patriots at this point. It may be less than 13-3. I think the Steelers win this game. They're the team that's playing for something. I think we get to this stage of the season yes. when it's team playing for something yes. versus team playing for nothing. That's built in advantage because the only thing the team that's playing for nothing is playing for is some sort of pride in their own accomplishment. But even then, how do you piece it together and muster the will to win? I think back to the quote caught on a hot mic from Jabril Peppers to Saquon Barkley a couple of weeks ago. You're right. lucky we're ass, right. is what Peppers said. That's the the attitude now. The players know it's a shit show. Everybody knows. There's, I'd be stunned if the Patriots win this game. What is the purpose for winning this game? It's not going to make Bill Belichick happy. It's not going to make him any more upset. It's not going to change anything. It's Thursday Night Football. Some individual players might play well. Juju Smith-Schuster, if he plays, has a little incentive, but... Steelers 13 to 3. That's right. So we both like the Steelers to cover. We both like the under. And maybe one of us will make the under one of our best bets. We'll yeah, see. Nah, Let's pivot I, to Sunday. I think your point about, you know, it's one team having something to play for is real. I I've I've been in those situations, right? You know, whether a quarterback or a backup where, yeah, late in the year, you know, you're a playoff team. You're playing a team that's not a playoff team. And even though the game's even, or you might even feel like, hey, wait, the non playoff team's out playing us. In the fourth quarter, the team that's got something to play for is the one with the urgency and digs a little deeper because they know, of course, there's a little more on the line. And wait, we've won these kind of games all year and we can draw from that. So I think that's very real. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And the fact that the Steelers got embarrassed at home by the Cardinals on Sunday, that's going to give them extra motivation. Mike Tomlin is going to be up their butts to go out there and play hard tonight yeah. and erase that memory of what happened on Sunday. This is their golden opportunity. The idea of the Steelers losing back-to-back -back home games the same week to teams that came in with two wins in December. Yeah. I I, I just doesn't seem I, I can't see that happening, yeah. but but uh we'll tune in tonight and watch that did one. I Sunday. Ever, did I ever tell you about my Jerry Seinfeld story since you brought it up a minute ago? Did I ever tell you about that at all? No, good thing we don't have 14 more games to get to. Nah, no ahead. problem. No problem. Quick story. But so I'm at the University of Texas. I'm the quarterback down there, right? And my mom and dad come down to visit me. Uh, and at the time, my girlfriend, now my wife, right, Danielle, they come down to visit me for like a little weekend in the spring. Jerry Seinfeld's making the rounds around the country on his co comedy tour. So I'm at the, the hotel with my mom and dad. I'm eating like, I think, a early lunch. And Jerry Seinfeld walks in the room. He's going to get some lunch too. And of course, we're at the table like, holy sh crap, holy shit, it's Jerry Seinfeld, right? So the waiter who's waiting on us, now he goes over to Jerry Seinfeld's table, right? He comes back and we're like, holy shit. We go to the waiter, holy shit, you're waiting on Jerry Seinfeld. He starts to laugh and he goes, you know what Jerry Seinfeld just said? He said, holy shit, there's Phil Simms. I can't believe it. <laughs> so, you know, of course, I was like, what? And I was like, oh my gosh. So I got up and, uh, you know, and my dad took me over and we met him and he actually gave me and, and my wife, my girlfriend at the time, two tickets to, to watch his comedy show that night. It was really cool and uh, definitely a, a moment I won't forget there, but a good laugh as far as what he said and the waiter said and all that. <laughs> How, how have I known you for seven years and you've never told me that before? I think I have a lot of stories like that that, you know, I because I, I grew up in a pretty fortunate way with my father and the people I met that sometimes I forget some of the meetings and encounters I had in my life until something stirs it up in my brain. That's probably the effects of me being blonde and smoking marijuana and all of those. But, yeah, I just forget at times. <laughs> I'm far more interested in the stories about the fear that you were going to drop an F-bomb live on the Regis show or you pissing off the porch and 
and your mom only realizing right. it. Or telling Danny DeVito he's grass. short. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Why is he short? Why is he so short, so, Dad? <laughs> uh, your, your dad. Your dad actually was in a Seinfeld episode. That's right. That's he's, right. Yeah, yeah. I know. Pretty yeah. big time. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a a cool cool thing. Certainly, definitely. And he's in Pulp Fiction. My dad. I think it's Pulp Fiction. He's on the. I think it's Pulp Fiction where there's a football magazine and he's on the cover of it. Oh, you know what? I don't know if it's I that it's one. I think it's one of the other Tarantino it movies. It might be. Uh, All right. It might. It's one of the other ones. But either way, we got another wormhole. Reservoir wormhold. Dogs, maybe. Yeah, maybe I think it's Reservoir Dogs. dogs. Oh, I, I think that's what that it out. is. I think it is. Yeah. 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 But but yeah, there's that episode where they go to the Giants game and they have a clip. Joel Rifkin. They're paging Joel Rifkin, the serial killer, who's dating Elaine. All right, and all right. You, you see Lawrence Taylor like look up when he hears the name Joel Rifkin. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It, it fills in that one. There's a clip of Phil playing. All right, let's get to the Sunday games. One o'clock Eastern. Buccaneers at the Falcons rematch earlier this year. Atlanta won 16-13 in Tampa. This time around, the Falcons are one point favorites at home with an over under of 39.5. If the Bucks win, and if the Saints beat the Panthers as they should. Three teams will be six and seven atop the NFC South. Who do you like in this one? Yeah, this is uh, – I, I like the Atlanta Falcons football team more than I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers football team. Now, you know, though, I have issues or, or concerns about, of course, the quarterback play with, with the Atlanta Falcons. That's, that's, to me, the big advantage that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have in this matchup. You know, Baker, Mike Evans, that connection – Right, even when things aren't going well on offense, they're dangerous and they can strike in one or two plays with big throws down the field. They're not afraid to take shots, you know, so they can make explosive plays in the pass game. That scares me. But uh, what also scares me is Tampa's defense overall not being the best as of late. Been a little disappointing. You know, I'm gonna go with the fact that it's in Atlanta. I think Atlanta's the better football team. Right. And I'm going to say that the Bucks aren't good enough on defense to make to make Desmond Ritter look too horrible or make him do too many stupid things. I'm going to ride the Falcons here 20 to 17 in a close one. I got the exact same score. We haven't done that in a while. I think back in week one, we had like three or four games, the exact same score, the exact same pick. Yeah. But I, I don't have a lot of faith in the Falcons. I haven't had much faith in the Falcons all year. I have a feeling I've picked against them a lot. This time around, they're at home. This is a, an opportunity to kind of knock the Bucks out of the chase for the division championship. And this whole thing with Chris Godwin's wife calling Todd Bowles a liar, that just speaks to dysfunction that isn't all that far beneath the surface. I don't know how that gets processed and handled. And for other players, it doesn't matter, but I think it's indicative. The fact that she felt comfortable doing it is indicative of just kind of a, just a sense of general unease and malaise and frustration within that organization. And high stakes, opportunity to pull themselves back into the chase, maybe win the division, host a playoff game. I just think the Falcons have shown me more lately to make me convinced. I mean, how the Bucks almost lost at home to the Panthers last week. That's right. So I'll go Falcons 20 to 17, and uh, we agree on that one. It's more fun when we disagree, but um, it is what it is, and we're tied going into the final five weeks, so the disagreements are going to mean a lot when they happen. Rams at Ravens. Here's one we might disagree on. Baltimore favored by seven. Weather could be an issue. Rain, wind, over under a 40. Who do you like in that one? Well, I, I like I like the the Ravens. I mean, that to me is more of a Ravens type of football game. When you talk about the weather, how can you not take that into account here, right? I trust the Ravens' run game more. I trust their ability to handle the elements all together more. Plus, you know, bigger football team, more powerful in a slop fest. I like that, and that favors the Ravens as well. You know, I I. I feel like the Rams will hang around. You've heard me talk about the Rams up front on defense are a little bigger than years past. I don't think they're going to be totally overwhelmed you know, with the size of the Ravens altogether. I like a lot of what they do in the secondary, but Ravens coming off a bye week, right? I think realizing what's in front of them at home, Rams across the country doing that. And like, hey, I like the Rams offense, but it's so centered around Puka and Cooper Cup. 
and everything they do there. I just can't imagine them exposing the Ravens like they've done to other teams, at least on a consistent basis. I'm going Ravens 27-17, and I probably need to adjust that score because of the weather. It's probably going to be a little lower than that, but uh, for now, yeah, 27-17 Ravens. So you're adjusting it or you're not? No, nah, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it for what it is. I'll okay. leave it. I know. I just the, the I, weather I already, scares me. I already me. adjusted my score. Yeah. I, I adjusted it down to 17 13. I'll give the Rams the cover here. I mean, what the hell? I suck against the spread. I may as well live it up a little and have some fun. I think the Rams can keep it close. Yeah. Puka Nakua impresses the hell out of Ooh. me beyond his playing abilities. I mean, we saw him walking off the field almost at the same rate of speed that Trevor Lawrence walked to the locker room on Monday night with his arm immobilized. And it's like, he's done. He ain't coming back. And he's got AC sprain and came back and played and was limited in practice on Wednesday, but did everything according to Sean McVay. So I think the Rams are going to give him fits, but I think the Ravens, uh, you know, and this is another one of those, both teams have things to play for in a different way. Ravens one seed, Rams trying to get to the playoffs. It won't surprise me if the Rams win. That's why I have them covering 17-13. No, I, I, I got 27-17, and I look at it as more like it's 20-17, to 17 and it's like we put them away, the Ravens, with a touchdown with like five minutes left. I, so I, I certainly don't feel comfortable about it, and I will not be making it a best bet. I could tell you that right now. Remember that game? It yes. was 2019. Yes, when they steamrolled them. 25. That's why I brought up they the beat size. They the shit out right. of the Rams. That's why I brought that up. 25 to 6. Yes. That was the game that, I don't want to say it cemented Lamar Jackson as MVP, but that was a game that made like, a lot of Whoa. people take notice right, right. that this is real. Yes. This, is, this isn't some fluke. This is real. It's late November, and he's playing like this against the defending NFC champions. Yeah, this team is legit, and of course they'd go on to secure the one seed and then lose in the in the divisional round at home to the Titans. All right, Lions at the Bears. Rematch of a game that was just played a few weeks ago. Bears had them beaten 26-14, four minutes left. The Lions scored twice. Jared Goff had three interceptions in that game. Lions are favored by 3.5 at Soldier Field, 43.5 over under. Do the Lions complete the sweep, Christopher? Hey, this is an interesting game. It is. I know at first look, you look at it and go, well, the Lions will win and you know, they're better and they're, you know, look at their record and look at the Bears. But as you know, you know, the Bears have been doing some good things. They have. Now, Justin Fields, he didn't throw the ball great against the Minnesota Vikings in the, in the last appearance there. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, and like we've talked about before he hurt, his, hurt himself, he was throwing the ball damn well. He's still a force running the ball. And, of course, they can run the ball. And it's a Lions defense that, you know, it's it's a little scary right now. It's all the things that we talked about or worried about are coming, you know, to, coming to, to fruition here with the Lions. Lack of a bit, another big-time front seven guy other than Hutchinson. He's the only guy that can really make something happen there. The secondary, they got to play zone. If they play man-to-man, -man, well, you're going to see DJ Moore go deep on them like they did a, a few weeks ago. Or like you saw Christian Watson go deep against the Lions. you know. So they have that threat too, let alone they can run the ball up there with some of the best teams in football, the Chicago Bears. And then the other part of the formula they have, you know, and it's a matchup league, and I know we talk about that all the time, is they, they, they play man-to-man. -man. They're sticky in coverage. They're not going to give the Lions like a lot of easy completions. That's where... They're impressive, let alone their defense and run game. It's real. Like, there's a few games I look at every week to go, their upset can happen. This is one of them that I look at, and I'm going to ride it. I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to take the Bears to win this and avenge the game they let slip through their fingers a few weeks ago. I'm going to go Bears 23-21 in Chicago. You love the Bears. You took the Bears the last time they played on Monday Night Football against the Vikings, and it went your way. I think that the Lions will be extra on guard. Yeah, for this one. maybe. I think the Lions will be less inclined to screw around. And they're still kind of hanging around the possibility of being the top seed. Yeah. And, you know, if the Cowboys catch the Eagles, the Lions play the Cowboys – there's a way the dominoes still fall. If the Lions just keep themselves properly positioned, yeah. the one seed is a chance. The two seed 
is a possibility. You get a couple of games at home in the postseason, not just one. So even though I think they're going to end up being the three seed, I don't think they're ready to concede that. And for the Bears, I think when you're this late in a lost season and you have your bye, I'm going to say it's hard to restart the lawnmower. Mm. When you've gotten a taste of the offseason and right. it's just five games away and we're not making it to the playoffs. Although, look, if they'd run the table, maybe they would. I just think that the Lions – and please don't make me regret this Dan Campbell. Please don't make me regret this Jared Goff. Please don't make me regret this Aiden Hutchinson. I'm going to believe that you can go there and complete the sweep and that you're going to continue a push for the two seed or the one seed. I'm going to go 24-21 Lions, and I love it because it's our first disagreement of the week, and if the Lions win, I'll pull ahead of you, at least for the moment, in our head-to-head competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, this is a big one. But, uh, you know, as you're saying, too, I mean, you know, it, it's dicey. You see it, right? You see it. You see the way the Bears are playing. They're they're dangerous. And the, the Lions, even though for the most part they've won a lot of these games – They've not been playing their best ball, you know, even last week, right? I mean, it's 27-21, and he felt like, man, the Saints kind of got a little momentum here. They just made a stop and made Detroit kick a field goal, and, of course, that's when Derek Carr fumbles the snap and all that, and that kind of ended the football game. But, yeah, this is the Lions, like we've talked about with the Dolphins, and like we've also talked with, you know, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. It's like good, we know, it's like how good. Because there's not a lot of big marquee wins on their schedule. I know week one and we got that. And we got Seattle early in the year. Or they lost to Seattle, excuse me. So, yeah, that's my point. There's not a lot of big marquee wins on their schedule. By the way, Sunday, December 10. Yeah. It's the five-year anniversary plus one day of the first moment we had real concerns about Jared Goff. Playing in Chicago for the Rams. Definitely part of my thought process. And that was when we first kind of stumbled across the country club narrative, as Rodney Harrison used to (laughs) refer to Jared Goff. Right. Get him in the cold, get him in the cold, and he crumbles. Rough him up a little. it's not going to be all that cold on Sunday. But, you know, one of the points you made last year, even though the Lions play indoors, the fact that he lives in Michigan, the fact that, you know, from time to time they practice outdoors. That's right. Maybe he's acclimated yeah. to playing in the cold and being in the cold. So I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I wonder how aware he's going to be. I, how can you not be? If we know about it, that it's five years almost to the day since he had a four interception meltdown against the Bears the year they went to the Super Bowl, the Rams, right. that is. Right. How is he not aware of it? Surely yeah. he's aware of it too. It actually makes me feel a little bit better about my pick because, you know, look at what happened. After six turnovers in two games, he had a pretty clean game against, I think, completely clean yeah, game completely. against the Saints. They should, right. they should have won that one a lot more easily than they did, but still, they got the win, and I think they'll get it on Sunday. Next game, Indianapolis Colts at the Cincinnati Bengals, a game that oozes with playoff implications because the Colts are currently the seventh seed. The Bengals, by virtue of beating the Jaguars on Monday night, are 6-6, six and six, and they're in the hunt. They're on the board of potential playoff teams. Jake Browning was great last week, Offensive Player of the Week for the AFC Colts favored by one point with an over under of 44. Are you riding the Jake Brown lightning or do you think Gardner Minshew and company can get their win streak to, I believe is it going to be five in a row Pete? I think it's five. It's at least four. It's maybe five. If they win this one, it's a um, fun game. Cool storylines. Definitely. I'm riding with the Colts though. I am uh, uh, one. You know, the, I have more faith in the Colts' defense and what they can do as far as against this Bengals attack. You know, Not a great defense, but pretty good up front like we've talked about. And in the secondary, even though they're not special talented there, you know, they kind of know what they do and they don't mess up a whole lot. I have a hard time thinking they're gonna, we're going to see people in some of the positions we saw the Bengals versus the Jaguars defense the other night. Uh, I think the other thing that and then the main reason I'm going to pick the Colts to win this football game, right, is I do think the Colts front four, lack of Bengals run game, all those things will help them stop browning in the past game. But the big thing is that the Bengals defense. I just don't I don't have much faith in the Bengals defense right now. And I'm uh, just an absolute huge fan of Shane Steichen and what he does. You've talked about Gardner Minshew. The dude can just fucking play. 
He knows how to play the position, right? He knows how to move in the pocket. He's got different arm angles. He gets rid of the ball, right? There's hey, there's a few throws every game where you go, oh, I wish he would have hit that. And that's why people always kind of go, I don't know if I want him to be our full-time starter. But, damn, they're still more good than bad. And then that, that, that offense, they do it all. I mean, motions, shifts, formations, concepts, you name it. I'm going to take the Colts on the road 24-20. Wow. Well, hey, I like it because the Colts have won four in a row. But when you look at the games, yeah. and they're all NFL teams. They're not being relegated to special, the NFL. But it's the Panthers. It's the Patriots by four. It's the Bucks by a touchdown. And it's that crazy-ass game last week against yeah. the Titans that they would have lost but for the special teams miscues made by the Titans. So I like the Bengals in this one, 24-21. I think the Bengals are, are confident. They've gotten their swagger back. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon. When you have players like that, it doesn't matter that it's your backup quarterback in Jake Browning. And that's a testament to the team they've built and the coaching of Zach Taylor. That's true. They were able to beat a very good Jaguars team, 491 yards against that Jacksonville defense on Monday night. So give me the Bengals. We've disagreed on two in a row. Yeah. Next up, will we disagree on this? The Jaguars at the Browns. Oh, this is one of the tough ones this week. The Browns are favored by three and a half over under of 30.5. Could be Joe Flacco. Could be Dorian Thompson Robinson at quarterback for the Browns. Could be Trevor Lawrence. Could be C.J. Beathard at quarterback for the Jaguars. And by the way, Beathard was limited yesterday with a left shoulder. We thought watching the game it was a left hand, left wrist. Apparently it's a shoulder that was causing some kind of nerve thing. I haven't seen the explanation, but on the injury report it's left shoulder. Not left wrist, not left hand. Limited in practice. Beathard, no practice for Trevor Lawrence. Nathan Rourke, who exactly is the next guy up. So we don't know who's playing quarterback for the Jaguars at this point. Regardless, we got to make our pick. Chris, who do you have? I'm picking the game as, as if Trevor Lawrence is not playing, right? I, I think they're going to say that, and he's young and he heals fast and all that, but I don't think he's going to play. I know the diagnosis is high ankle sprain. I, Looking at that play, I, I'm guessing he has both ankle sprains. It's, it's both. He got stepped on and got the traditional role, then got caught in a bad position and got the ankle caught in that way to give him the high ankle sprain. So I, I don't expect to see him this week. I'm picking this game as, as an if C.J. Beathard is the starting quarterback. We'll see where that goes. But because of that, yeah, I'm not picking C.J. Beathard on the road, cold weather, Lake Erie, Cleveland Browns defense. Make your first start in that environment, negative Ghost Rider. I can't get behind that. I can't. And then you couple that with the way the Jaguars' defense looked and has had moments of looking like that a little bit here over the last you know, few months here and there. I mean, the Texans, we know they made some big plays. The 49ers gashed them, right? It, it's scaring me a little bit. It is. And what the Bengals did scared me, of course, to, to their defense the other night. So um, I, I, I think this is a game where – DTR, Joe Flacco, or whatever, I don't think they're going to be, have to be able to be relied on to the same capacity Flacco was last week. They should be able to run the ball in the Jaguars. I'm going to go Browns, 20-16. to 16. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that is not a common score, 20-16. to 16. It's the exact same score I have. Exactly. To the point, 20-16. to 16. Damn, I thought Brown. you were going to go Jags. I thought creepy. you might take the Jags there. No. I thought you might go on no. that one. I can't. I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't. The Browns, after losing two in a row on the road, need this one desperately. And it's just a tall order for the Jaguars. I feel like their they're post-49ers ass-kicking lift, that's now gone yeah. after what happened on Monday night. they right. got a lot to process on a short week. And they're a different team without Trevor Lawrence. Yes, that's The defense right. gave up 491 yards. So I, I think the Browns can do enough to win the game and get to eight and five and keep themselves alive, at least for now, for a playoff spot. All right, Panthers at the Saints. Saints favored by only five against the Panthers that still have only one win on the season, 37.5 over under. Derek Carr was limited in practice on Wednesday with a cocktail of injuries. Concussion, rib, shoulder, I believe. Taysom Hill missed practice with a couple of different injuries. We don't know who's going to play quarterback for them. Jameis Winston's healthy at least. But do you see any way that the Panthers find a way to get their second win of the season against the Saints team that's still in the mix for the division title? I'm going to take the Saints, but I, I don't – like, this is a little scary. You know, I think there's a reason that it's at minus five. One, 
The Panthers, their D is good, as we've discussed a lot. They're good. They are. And it's a, a Saints offense that's a little all over the place. And as we know with Derek Carr, it's it can be a little too conservative. You saw Michael Thomas, right? He sent out a tweet about the first interception of the game, right? A.T. Perry, you heard me in the viewing room. He was wide open, 30-yard completion. There it is. Start the game. Get it going. I don't know what we're looking at. Seems like he was looking at the rush going, are they going to hit me? Let me throw a check down. And it was like, no, the pocket's clean. Why are you throwing the check down? He's, we got 30 yards right here. So that, that hey, scares me. What did Bruce Irvin tell me? Bruce Irvin told me they know you get around him, he gets rattled. Irvin knows it from three years with him in Oakland. Yeah. You get around him, he gets rattled. Right. And, and you've got that Michael Thomas stuff. You, you know, you, you, I'm, starting to, you know, I'm starting to question my pick. Go ahead. Well, Go ahead, finish it's scary because pick. of that. It's scary because of that. And I think when you couple this on top of it, like – the Panthers are getting into running the football, right? They, they they know they can't win throwing the football, you know. And and last year we know how good they were running the ball towards the end of the year. They're one of the best running teams in football with Steve Wilkes at head coach. They've gotten back to that a little bit, to where that's where the Saints could be susceptible to. I'm gonna take the Saints in this one, and I'm gonna make it 21 to 13. Right, but I'm taking it like 21 to 13 because I think it's going to be like 14 to 13 with like five minutes left in the game. I don't think this is like a dominant 21 to 13 win. Back in week two, the Saints only won by 20 to 17 over the Panthers in Carolina. That was before we realized the Panthers were going to be caca this year. <laughs> this time around, I just feel like this is a game where the Saints have a chance to yeah. kind of build a little confidence. Like, which team's less dysfunctional? The Saints are less dysfunctional. And it's at home, and they're still very much alive for the opportunity to host a playoff game. Dennis Allen probably feeling some heat. There is some weirdness happening. Last week, a lot of boos when Derek Carr would enter the game in place of Taysom Hill. Cheers for Taysom Hill. That's something that you know may, may cause Carr to fire off that death stare at somebody. And again, I don't know who's going to play. I don't know if he's going to play. I don't know if Hill's going to play. We'll see. Carr's going to have to be cleared from the concussion protocol, and he's had one other one this year. He's had the lingering shoulder problem, so I don't even know we're going to see him. I'm still going to say that whatever they do, it's going to be good enough to overcome the Panthers. I got 24-10 to 10 Saints over the Panthers, but it's not going to be a best bet because there's too many unknowns about the New Orleans Saints this weekend. All right, the last one in the 1 o'clock window. The Houston Texans, three-and-a-half-point favorites, taking on the Jets. Zach Wilson is back, and this is it. If the Jets are going to have any chance, they have to win this game. They're 4-8. and eight. They lose one more, and they're done. They're probably already done. They're going to have to run the table and get some help, but they're probably, yeah, this is it. Like, this is last chance. You lose this one and just forget about the season. Will the Jets pull the upset over the playoff-minded Texans, Chris? I don't think so. I don't. Now, there's, there, there's some elements. I think There's one element that scares me. It's just that maybe Robert Sala can show Zach Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett how D'Amico Ryan's defense works and maybe expose some of the rules they do. I think that's the only thing that I really look at to go, ooh, that makes me hesitate a little, right? But I'm picking the Texans to win the football game. One of the Texans' defense, it, it's real, and I think they're going to give the Jets' offense all they can handle, and we know that Jets' offense ain't worth a damn anyways, right? And then I think when you you know, you know flip it to the other side, I just I haven't seen anybody other than the Carolina Panthers, oddly enough, make the Texans' offense look stagnant or not good. Nobody. I mean – it's it's highlight reel throws and plays every week. It's some of the best highlight packages we make for Football Night in America. It's Houston because they can throw the ball down the field because of their superstar quarterback, and then they can run the ball right now. So that, to me, is just too much offense for the Jets and the Jets' defense to handle and the Jets' offense to keep up with. I'm going to take Texans 23-13. to I got 24-17. And you know what you were saying about Robert Sala helping Zach Wilson and company – with the D'Amico Ryan's defense, that cuts the other way too. D'Amico Ryan's could help them. Helps CJ Stroud, hundred percent, right? Right. Defense that they they're familiar with, yes. And the defense that they use every week. So, I just think in a situation like that, the edge goes to the better team. Yeah. The Texans right That's now right. are the better team. Stroud, clearly the offensive rookie of the year, still in the conversation for MVP, and this is an opportunity for them to move from in the hunt to the category of 
wild card. We if might- the Colts would lose and the Texans would win, right. they jump up into that spot. We might get some sloppy weather, if I remember correctly, too, up here in the Northeast on Sunday. Right, I, I like you talked about with the Ravens Rams football game. I know maybe you can look at it there, Al Roker. When you get a second, weather but, on the ones, but weather on the ones. Well, with it's Al. a safe bet that if it's a weekend in New York, the weather's going to be shit. Pretty That's much a safe bet. Pretty much. Shit. I mean, when Let's you come see. up here, Let's see. the weather's shit. The, you know, shit just follows you everywhere you go. So I understand it, and that's Thanks. probably what'll happen. <laughs> uh, Sunday. 65% chance of rain with a high of 61, but 61 or whatever it was, 65% chance of rain. And it looks like the rain starts around noon and continues into the evening. So yes, total rainfall of 0.45 inches. Those are your weather details on the ones. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. All right, let's take a break. You can go check out what's happening in your neck of the woods. Go stick your head out the window. That's how you tell the weather (laughs) when we return the late games for Sunday afternoon, including the latest Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes showdown. More PFDPM and Chris Sims on button right after this. Don't forget... On DraftKings Sportsbook this season, new customers can bet $5 and pocket $150 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code PFTLIVE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. All right, the Vikings bring in their crown with the two horns on the side to Las Vegas. Their first trip to Allegiant Stadium. They are favored by three coming out of the bye week. Josh Dobbs will continue to start at quarterback. Chris and I are both mildly surprised by that. We thought they were going to go with Nick Mullins after that, what was it, 10 interception performance against the Bears on Monday Night Football. Over under of 40. Both teams had the bye. Both teams get the advantage of extra time. Antonio Pierce trying to do enough to have the permanent head coaching job. Do the Vikings get... Back to the right side of 500 after losing two in a row, Chris. Well, you tell me, Mr. Purple People Eater. Go ahead. You know you always lead off the Vikings pick. What are you going to do here? Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. My first instinct was to believe they're going to win, but I don't believe they're going to win. But I think that's just the pessimism that has been forged by years of having my heart ripped out and stomped upon by the Minnesota Vikings. I think they're the better team. They clearly have more to play for, although the Raiders are kind of hanging around at 5-7. and seven. Yeah. They're only one game behind the cluster of 6-6 six and six teams that are very much alive. So this is the kind of game that could propel the Raiders forward. I just think for the Vikings, this is it. This is the test. This is the first playoff game for the Vikings. Not that they have to run the table, but if they can't win this one, when they've had two weeks to get ready, they understand the stakes, and Justin Jefferson is back. If they can't win this one, they're cooked. They're over. It's done. That makes me think they'll find a way to win 24-13. to 13. Yeah, I'm um, a lot of the same beliefs you got, too. Uh, I do. You know, one, I, respect to Antonio Pierce, the Raiders, what they're doing. Patrick Graham, their D coordinator, right? Josh Jacobs has definitely got going a little bit. They are throwing the ball down the field. Aiden O'Connell, you know, respectable for what he's doing, especially as a rookie quarterback, and it's not like he was a first-round pick. But I just look at it and go, that Vikings defense is too damn good. I just don't see the Raiders being able to make enough plays or move the ball on a consistent basis, right? Let alone, I don't think it's – too complicated or present too many weapons to where Brian Flores won't be able to break it down a little bit. The other side of the ball, like I like the Raiders defense. They're really well coached, but you know, I think the world of Kevin O'Connell and what his attack is, let alone, I know they got Max Crosby, but the rest of the pass rush is underwhelming and you guys pass protect pretty well. And the Raiders secondary, even though it's well coached, it's not very talented. And Justin Jefferson's coming back and it's Osborne and it's Addison and it's Powell. And you guys got and Hawkinson. I'm with you. I think it's like the the Raiders hang around. They're a pain in the butt, but I'm going to go Vikings 20 to 14. All right, we both have the Vikings winning. We both have the Vikings covering. Again, it's more fun when we disagree, especially when we disagree on Vikings game. Next up, the Seahawks and the 49ers. They got together 
Two weeks ago on Thanksgiving night, the 49ers won 31-13 to in Seattle. Now they're in Santa Clara. 49ers are favored by 10.5 with the over-under of 47. And Chris, every damn week this year that the 49ers have played, you have picked them to win. Will you continue your streak? I can't imagine that you won't. I, you know, as the way it looks right now, I'm going to be picking them all the way through February 11th. And then that's the Super Bowl and that's when it'll end. Uh, That's the way I feel about them. So, yes, I'm picking them. And, you know, the Seahawks, a little extra time, rest, break, reevaluate. What did the 49ers do to us? All of that. You know, maybe catch the 49ers a little bit on a lull because, hey, we just went into Philadelphia and beat the Eagles, right? It's a big-time game for the Seahawks to try to stay alive in this playoff conversation. They've shown in their history they're not afraid to go to San Francisco. They beat them. They hung in there with them in the playoff game last year, especially in the first half of the game. It was very dicey. But ultimately, even if the 49ers come out a little bit sleepwalking, I just they're, they're in a different class than the Seahawks. And the offense of the 49ers is too special. And the biggest thing, as I told you last week with the, the Seahawks-Cowboys, that the, 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 they're not going to get the same defenses. The reason the Seahawks looked like a different offense last week is because the Cowboys just man-to-man every play. Oh, they burned us in man-to-man. Let's call it again. Maybe they don't get burned this time. Oh, they got burned again. Hey, we'll call it again. Oh, we got burned. Damn, we're in a track meet. Don't call zone or anything. Just keep calling man and letting them fly off the field. The Niners aren't going to do that. They don't do that. They're just going to tactically play man-to-man here and there. 28-17 to in like a game where the Niners don't even play A-plus football. I'll really probably show their A-minus, B-plus type of game. I, I think that psychologically the Seahawks are at a point where they've been taking body blow after body. Yeah, that's right. They get beaten by the Rams to complete the sweep. Then what happened to them after that? Who'd they play? Who'd they play? They had the 49ers. What the hell am I thinking? The 49ers beat them 31 to 13. Then the Cowboys the following Thursday night. It's like they emptied the tank against the Cowboys. Like this is it. This is our last stand. This is our last chance to stay alive in this hunt. And they, I feel like they burned up so much to try to win that game. And the fact that they ultimately lost, it's good they had a couple of extra days to process it. I just can't imagine them going to Santa Clara and pulling off the victory. Unless there's a rash of injuries early in the game to key 49ers players. And that's not impossible. But I think the 49ers are just too good. 31-20. to Same score as last time, but I'll give the Seahawks another touchdown. Slight cover by the 49ers. 10.5 point spread. I have them winning by 11 but, uh, yeah, I, the 49ers are clearly the best team right now, and the Seahawks are in this death march that we saw coming. It went from early in the year when it looked like the Seahawks are really good. Ooh, this is their opportunity to kind of take over the conference. As it got closer and closer, it's like, uh-oh, they're fucked. And they're, they're halfway through it, and they got this one and the Eagles next before they, they have three winnable games down the stretch. Yeah, it, it's, it's one of those where you saw potential early in the year. They got talent. We know that, right? It's the scheme on both sides of the field is underwhelming and lack of real good old line and a dominant D line is an issue with Seattle. So yeah, you know, there's potential there, but you know, they showed that, it, you know, as the game the year went on, teams figured out their scheme and have exposed them and made life very hard. And yeah, I, you know, they're not a legitimate threat to me as far as in the NFC to, to make any waves in the NFC playoff. All right. Bills at the Chiefs. Buffalo has won in Kansas City each of the last two seasons. Chiefs feeling desperate. Bills feeling opportunity to rebuild the Jenga Tower. It fully collapsed, but now, week off, look around, they're very much alive. Can the Bills get to Kansas City, emerge with the victory? Chiefs are only favored by one and a half, which kind of tells me neutral site, Bills would be favored somehow in this one. 48 and a half over under. I've picked the Chiefs to win every game this season, just like you've picked the 49ers to win every game this season. You continued your trend. I'm going to go first. Okay. Apparently, you're not going to continue I'm your breaking. trend. Yeah. I'm breaking my habit. I'm. You know, this was one where every once in a while, there's a game that comes along where the attitude is, which way am I going to feel worse if I'm wrong? And... I'm going to feel worse if I miss 
what's staring us in the face about the Bills going in there and turning their season around. Sean McDermott, a chance to stick it again to the guy that fired him in Philadelphia. Remember, McDermott was the defensive coordinator after Jim Johnson. Andy Reid fired him, and things have worked out pretty well for Sean McDermott since then. But I'd rather be wrong about thinking the Chiefs are going to win and have them or what, 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 wait, let me try that again. Yeah. I'd rather be wrong about thinking the Chiefs are going to lose and have them win than thinking the Bills are going to lose and have them win. I'm on with the Bills here. The, I, I, there's just something missing from the Chiefs. And we all keep thinking because we've got five years. We've got five years of seeing the Chiefs always find a way. We keep thinking all they have to do is press the button and it's going to work. Last Sunday night told us it isn't always going to be there. I think the Bills coming out of their bye are going to have enough. Josh Allen leads the way, 27-24. Bills beat the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I hear you. You know, there's concern. You you heard me saying it eight, nine weeks ago. There's concern with that Chiefs offense. There is. It's not as good as it was with Eric Bieniemy. You know, they had Juju Smith-Schuster last year and McCole Hardman before he got injured and all that to where, you know, they were more reliable pieces to go along with Travis Kelsey. They haven't found guys to, to replace that. Let alone, you know, it's two years after Tyree Kill. Now they're dependent on the run game, almost always. And even when they run the ball well, it doesn't necessarily translate into winning football for the Chiefs. Because they're not like, they're a, a good running team. I don't think they're a great running team. They can't just knock it in the end zone all the time. They run well between the 30s, and then they stall out once they get down there close, right? I, I, I think their D offense is going to be easy for McDermott to break down. That that's scary, you know, and the fact that yeah, there's not a big time weapon to worry about, right? The scheme itself is not crazy, so we can play the run and drop into our zones and and also be a handful in the pass game, and then the Chiefs defense, which I think the world of, you know, I hey, listen, I've liked what I've seen from the Bills since they fired uh, Ken Dorsey. It it it's been pretty good. Josh Allen's been a different player. They've attacked the right way. The Chiefs play a ton of man-to-man, -man, right? You know, the Bills can protect, you know? So for all those reasons, I'm – and they're not scared to go into Kansas City. For all those reasons, I'm with you. I'm going to go with the Bills to win this football game. It won't be a best bet, but I'm going to pick them to win 24-21. There we go. We agree on that one. I'm surprised, but I'm not, because you were more likely to go with the Bills than I was. The fact that I'm on the Bills really tells you that we – we both think the Bills right now have an opportunity to find their footing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe get right. to the playoffs. Right. Broncos at the Chargers. Broncos had their five-game winning streak end in Houston last week, but the Chargers, who who are struggling and have no excuse for not be con being contenders in the AFC with Justin Herbert, they're two-and-a-half-point favorites over the Denver Broncos. What in the world is going on here? The Denver Broncos come in as the underdogs, even though they are – in the playoff conversation, the Chargers are just trying to get Brandon Staley not fired. 44 is the over-under. Chris, who do you have? I'm going Broncos here. I am. I, I just have more faith in the Broncos' toughness, grit, right? I think Russell Wilson will ba bounce back from end-of-the-game troubles last week, right? They can run the ball. They run it enough to where the Chargers got to worry about it. I think Russell Wilson in the past game, they'll make plays. You know, the Chargers will hang around. They might be able to pick apart the, the Broncos' defense to a degree. But, you know, as we know, Denver's defense, it's been a pain in the butt. You know, it really has. And I don't expect the, the, the Chargers to be going up and down the field against this Denver defense. Not that way. I think it's a close football game. But I'm going to take the Broncos on the road, 23-20. I, I like the Broncos in this one, and I feel like I'm missing something because they're not favored to win. I've got 24-20. Like, what's Vegas trying to do to me here? But Russell Wilson, capable of making big throws, had a bad week, can overcome it. Sean Payton understands what's at stake here. I figure there'll be a lot of Broncos fans at that stadium because there's always a lot of fans of the opposing uh, team when the Chargers are playing at home. I like the Broncos. Keep their playoff hopes alive. With Sean Payton and Russell Wilson, 24-20. All right, we'll, we'll take a break. When we return to primetime games, including the game of the week, possibly the game of the month, if not the game of the year, the Eagles at the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. More Chris Sims unbuttoned at PFTPM right after this. Don't forget... 
On DraftKings Sportsbook this season, new customers can bet $5 and pocket $150 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get a no sweat, same game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code UNBUTTON when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. I don't know. They don't have a crown. I have a crown. They got a crown. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I've done better. That they wasn't my best effort. Not kings. <laughs> now, I, I lost I my way. Challenge Chris yeah. to abandon the Sunday Sunday pro wrestling voice for a Seinfeld voice, and yeah, kind of got caught. I got caught. I don't stuck. know what. I don't know either. At I got some stuck. point, at some point, I thought Captain Andrew Luck was going to emerge. <laughs> dearest <laughs> I mother, I know. So damn, maybe I that's lost next my week. tone there. Damn it, damn it. I know that wasn't good. That was All a right. C minus effort. Sunday night football: Eagles at the Cowboys. Dallas favored at home by three and a half points. They've won fourteen in a row at AT and T Stadium. Over under of fifty two. It's the highest over under of the week. Chris, do the Cowboys? Catch the Eagles atop the NFC East. Man, I, I go back and forth with this one. I do. It, it's it's you know, it's size versus speed, as you've heard me say, and you've heard me talk about it a ton over the last two years. The Cowboys, when they got to play bigger football teams, it's an issue. They're compromised. Right, they're not big enough up front, and they gotta put too many resources into stopping the Niners' run, the Eagles' run, whatever it is. And then it's too aggressive in the pass game, and then of course it's one on one, and people open down the field that way. So that always scares me with this matchup. I do. I mean, it does. Um, but the fact that it's at home, uh, it's desperate. I don't want to say desperation, but wanting. The, the 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 wanting to motivate the motivating themselves to prove to themselves that they can beat the Eagles and that they're in the class of them and the 49ers, right? The Eagles reeling a little right now. As you heard me say on PFT, they've really been outplayed three weeks in a row, four weeks in a row. Jalen Hurts has been outplayed by the opposing corner, cornerback four weeks in a row, right? The defense, the Dom DeSandro thing, they all worry me a little bit. And then the Cowboys are hitting on all cylinders on the offensive side of the ball. I don't think it's as good as everybody's making it out to be. I think the schedule and some of the defenses they played have made it look a little bit better. That's what gives me some hesitation. you know. And then I am scared to death, as you know, with the Cowboys playing so much man-to-man -man against A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. That's scary. I, I'm going to go with the team. It's e it's a very close match. I think the Eagles are a better football team. But I'm going to go with the team that I feel like is playing better football the last few weeks and right now. And I'm going to go with the Cowboys, 27-24. Oh, you've got the Eagles covering by a half point. I've gone 30-23. to It could be worse. I think the Eagles will hang around. But it could be worse. It could be a blowout. Wow. Because this is just wow. the opportunity for the Cowboys – to finally, you know, you get these moments short of their ultimate goal where they have a chance to kind of flex their muscles a little bit like they did Thanksgiving. It was euphoric for Jerry Jones and company to beat the commanders as badly as they didn't have that big celebration on Thanksgiving. Last Thursday night probably gave them a little, uh, uh, well, it's not going to be easy all the time. But, you know, think about it, Chris. For the second straight week, the Eagles, after playing a tough game, physical game, are facing an opponent that's had extra time to get ready. The 37-34 win in overtime over the Bills. 49ers had a couple of extra days to get ready. And now, Cowboys have a couple of extra days to get ready after the Eagles got stomped by the 49ers. This time, the Eagles have to travel. The Cowboys have been home. This, to me, has the potential to be a blowout, but... I don't want to deal with Eagles fans any more than I have already this week. I'm not going to pick some crazy score that they're going to go nuts about until that score happens. I'll go 30 to 23, keep it within a touchdown, but say don't be surprised if it's worse than that. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it's going to be interesting. It is. The McCarthy, you know, appendix being taken out, surgery, that adds a little something. The Dom DeSandro element. And the Eagles having to deal with that a little bit adds a little something, let alone it's a great rivalry. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch on Sunday night. Be interesting to see if DeSandro's even at the game on the sidelines. The NFL still reviewing what to do about his involvement with that altercation 
uh, between Devontae Smith and Dre Greenlaw. Monday Night Football, two games at the same damn time, starting at the same time. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know why they're doing it, but again, they don't ask me those questions. Titans-Dolphins in Miami, 13-point favorite is the home team with an over-under of 46.5. That's the biggest spread of the week, and 93% of the spread money is on the Miami Dolphins. Chris, they're 9-3, and three, trying to get to 10-3. and three. Will they win, and will they cover that big spread? I'm going to say yes and yes, but I don't think it's going to be like pretty and like easy. I could see Tennessee having a good game plan on the defensive side of the ball and – you know, making life a little more difficult than we're accustomed to with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I I don't think that's crazy. Vrabel, their game planning, everything they do there, they're pretty good against the run, as we know. So, you know, they might not have to be so over-worried playing the run game with Mostert. You know, the other side of the ball, I think, is really my big concern is that I just don't see the Titans moving the ball consistently at all on the Miami Dolphins. You know, I think this is kind of one that's kind of ugly, and for a while we sit there and go, hey, the Titans are hanging in there. This is pretty good. But ultimately, like, the dam breaks and the Dolphins make a few plays and whatever else. 28-13, to 13, Dolphins. 34-17, Dolphins, and it could be worse than that. They just have that glow about them. The Titans are kind of lost right now. Special teams coordinator fired after, you know, they emptied the tank and almost beat the Colts. I just feel like they're falling into that category of what do they really have to play for? Dolphins are still playing for the one seed in the AFC. All right, the other game that will be happening on Monday night, a couple of weeks ago it looked like caca. Now that the Packers have pulled themselves back into the race for the playoffs, not quite so bad. They're favored by six and a half, taking on the Giants, coming out of the bye and sticking with Tommy DeVito. Tyrod Taylor, even though he's back, Tyrod doesn't play. DeVito does. Chris, are your New York Giants going to pull off the upset? They're going to play hard. I know that. I know that. The G-men ain't laying down for anybody. And you don't get a lot of chances to play prime time. So I think they'll be ready to go for a little bit at least. I can't pick them to win the game. You know, the Packers are one of the more hot teams in football. They're coming in there, chests out, like we got some momentum. You know, we're young. We feel it. And I don't think it's like, oh, it's going to be cocky and lead to, like, letdown. I think it's more of like, hey, we're going this way and we believe in everything. I, I feel like it's more of that mojo. Their offense does everything under the sun. I, you know I love the Giants and Wink Martindale. And, listen, we don't know with Christian Watson, right, and where he's at with his hamstring. At least I, I haven't heard yet. That's a little concerning to me. But I just think their offense has too much for the, for the Giants' defense, right? And one of the phrases I used with Jordan Love in my notebook breakdown on my podcast last week is that, you know, they had the training wheels on for, like, the first 10 weeks of the year. In the last four weeks, now he's on a crotch rocket doing f- wheelies down the highway at 110. I mean, they got the offensive people moving everywhere. The defense is real, right? I love their D. I don't expect the Giants to do a whole lot on the offensive side of the ball. Packers 24 to 10. 23-20 Packers. Christian Watson, we don't know anything about him yet because the injury reports for the Monday night games don't get filed until Thursday. So we'll see if he's able to play. I think the Packers good enough to win. The Giants good enough to hold their own. They, they found a way to take a disastrous season and make it less disastrous. That's right. And, and have something to feel good about and something to build on. And, you know, it doesn't put you into the playoff conversation, but maybe it keeps John Mara from continuing his streak of firing guys in two or fewer years. He's gone three straight coaches. We're two years and you're out. Ben McAdoo, Pat Shermer, Joe Judge, gone, gone, gone. And Brian Dayball had to at least be worried about that. I think they found a little something to get Dayball another chance. All right, when we return, best bets and Folsom Prison Blues pick. Week 14, Mega Picks Podcast. Chris Sims unbuttoned at PFTPM. Back right after this. Wrapping up the Week 14 Mega Picks Podcast with best bets and our Folsom County. You got me screwed up. Folsom Prison Blues. Folsom you County. I, you right. know, I know Folsom your, County, the old stadium in Atlanta. Remember? I used, they used to call it the Folsom County Stadium. Remember? Fult, I thought it was Fulton County. Oh, maybe anyway, it was. Whatever. Give me your first best bet. It is Fulton. Yeah. Give okay. me your first best bet. Fulton County then. Fine. We're going with that. Uh, my first one is in Texas, and they are the Texans, and they are from Houston. 
I'm picking them to beat the Jets 23 to 13, and I think they will cover that three and a half point spread. This is a tough week. When in doubt, go with elite teams at home who are favored to win. I'm going to begin with the San Francisco 49ers, 10 and a half point favorites at home against the Seahawks. I think they win. I think they cover. It is a tough week, definitely. All right, my second one. I'm going with uh, the Broncos. I am. I just, I, I, you know, I like the Broncos, the culture, what they're about, their toughness, their grittiness. I think they're going to find a way to win this game on the road against the Chargers. And, of course, they're underdogs by two and a half. I got them winning by three. I'm going with the Broncos. I feel like that's a trap, so I'm staying away from that one. Again, when in doubt, elite team at home favored Cowboys minus three and a half on Sunday night against the Eagles. Wow, wow, wow. I like it. Woo, that's going to be a good one. All right, my last one is I'm, I'm going with the Packers. I am. That's too low. For me, I don't know what like I don't know what they're thinking. The Giants might score points wise. I'm I'm taking the Packers, twenty four to ten. I know they're favored by six and a half. I think they're going to win easily. You went three road teams, two of which will play at MetLife Stadium. I go home team, elite team, spread no matter how big it is. Dolphins covering the thirteen points against the Titans on Monday. Wow, night. you're right, such a whore for good teams, you. Whore you all right here we go i'm maybe i'm my Folsom county blues pick i'm taking the the dolphins over the panthers <laughs> i'll make just to make it fun i'll say the 49ers over okay the That's all right it. enjoy the game see ya go home teams Yo, yo, what up, homies? Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to Chris Sims Unbutton. Right now, we got Sunday pod, right? So you can have it Monday morning. We recap all the action. Wednesday, it's the What the F*** Happened podcast. We're going to get deep in the weeds on the key matchups of the week. And then Thursday, I'm picking games with that jerk Florio. So you know where to find us, homies. Keep watching. Peace out. We'll see you.